Hello and welcome. April Cox here with Self-Publishing Made Simple, where we help authors through every step of the self-publishing journey and beyond. Today, we have an amazing, timely topic. If you have struggled between TikTok, Facebook Live, Instagram Reels, and if you're putting together a Kickstarter, all of these things require one thing of really awesome video. And if you are looking to improve your video skills today, then you are in the right place where we have a special guest speaker and we'll talk about it in just a moment. Valerie McCavish is an award-winning producer and scriptwriter with over 30 years in television, radio, and advertising production. She's now using her over decade of experience to help female entrepreneurs grow their online business. Please join me in welcoming Valerie McTavish. Welcome, Valerie. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit, Valerie, about your background. How did you get involved in television and doing what you're doing today? Well, the short answer is gumption. And probably a little bit of naivete. I started my university career in communication and was disappointed that it was all theory. So as a young person, marched myself into my cable company and demanded a TV show that didn't quite go the way I expected it. They said no, but they did agree to train me in every aspect of making television and I caught the bug. So from then on, my career was dedicated to working in video production. I worked in a post-production facility, worked for a different production houses that were doing documentaries and short films and went over, as I like to say, sometimes to the dark side to work in advertising when I got tired of begging for documentary dollars and work on big budget projects headed up at the time. They're bringing sort of the online world to advertising for that agency. It was just early, early days for that. So I was really excited to be a part of that. And then continued on from there to go in work in morning news and uh, be a producer for the news. Eventually decided to leave television and move my attention to the smaller screen so that I could help businesses really take advantage of video as a form of communication, as a way to connect with their audience and to get their message out there so that they didn't have to rely entirely on other traditional forms of advertising. And that was in 2010. So it's been a while and really shifted over to helping female entrepreneurs use this as a tool for them to get past the confidence gap that so many women are facing when it comes to putting themselves out there and be able to take advantage of video as a marketing tool. Because as you said, April, it's everywhere and it is absolutely so important if you want to be able to spread your message in the most effective way. Well, you know, in preparation for this meeting, I just tried to look up some statistics on video marketing. And Wise Owl survey that came out recently says that 86% of video marketers say that video has been effective for generating leads. That's up 2% from 2021 and 5% since 2019. So this is a huge opportunity. And for those authors who are avoiding going on camera, what are they missing? What are the opportunities that video provides us so well that if we don't break out of that comfort zone we're never going to step into. Yeah. And it's tough to say this to authors because I know that you're probably became an author because you love to read, right? And you want to instill the love of reading in the next generation. But here's the thing that's happening right now. Video is the way that people are consuming content. And I like to think of it as having it as an alternative can't hurt. So while you might have great copy on your website, it's important to have video there as well. There's a report that says that if you have video on your landing page, then you're going to see conversions go up 80%. So that's a pretty significant difference. Once people have gotten all the way to your website and thinking about buying your book, if you're selling your books on your website, having that video is going to help them get over the hump on making that decision. Plus, when it comes to social media, you're going to see more shares with content. If you have a video in your content, Facebook, for example, has six times the engagement of a regular post. It has 1200% more shares. And not only that, people will get further into your content when it's a video versus written. So your message is going to stick with a viewer more than a reader, unfortunately. (laughs) Hard for me to say this to a bunch of authors, but when it comes to your marketing, when it comes to your content that's out there about your books, the reality is that people will remember the video 
more than they'll remember what you wrote. And the statistic is something like a 95% retention of a video message compared to 10% retention of a written message. Plus, when it comes to you know the long-term strategy, video is going to increase your SEO for your website so that it comes up higher in search rank. And it's also going to mean that people are going to stay on your website a little bit longer, which again, helps that with that SEO. So some real marketing technical stuff. But the most important thing to remember is video consumption is going up year over year, almost a hundred percent year over year. So if you aren't using video in addition to whatever else you're doing to talk about your books, then you're definitely leaving some people out and they're going to miss your message. They're going to miss the opportunity to be exposed to what you're doing. Wow. That's a pretty significant impact that we can have and that we're leaving on the table if we don't overcome this fear. So do you have any tips for authors who like me were afraid to go live and really just conquer that fear in order to really provide the impact that we're all looking to provide for children. Yeah. So, you know, this is what I work for, you know, 12 weeks in my video marketing mastery program on is helping people get past this confidence issue and really have a plan in place. And so the quick fix to anything that is stopping you from getting on camera, whether it's a fear of judgment, whether it's a fear of getting it wrong, perfectionism, or maybe it's a tech issue that you feel like you can't get past. The key is to take a look at why you are hesitating and who's going to miss out. So think about the people who would love to learn about your book and think about what's going to happen if they don't get exposed to it, if they don't get a chance to discover this amazing thing that you've created. Think about them instead of your own fears, instead of what's going on for you. And then take that baby step, try it for the first time, accept that you're going to get it wrong the first time, be okay with it being imperfect and know that, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, know that people don't want you or need you to be perfect. So let go of this idea that you have to be perfect on video. I stumble all the time. I've probably stumbled 10 times already. And I'm okay with it because that's reality. That's how real people behave and how real people talk. So don't come at video like it's got to be this perfect gem that is flawless. It's not. It needs to be real and it needs to be authentic. And so if you can let go of that need to be perfect, then those fears come down significantly because you're just showing up to share this amazing thing that you've created with the people who are going to love it. And they're going to be able to share it with people who will love it and remember it for years to come. That's why you created it, right? Right. And I think I shared with you not too long ago when we had this discussion that when I first started my YouTube channel, I was the same way. I did not want to make anything public right off the bat. I was just recording things for my authors to be able to go and rewatch them or replay them. And that turned into exactly what you said, thinking about all these questions that people were asking me and all of the help that I had there, that if I could just make those public they would get the answers they need. And I'll tell you, it's been an amazing journey for me. I still have so much to learn about being comfortable on video and you know, planning them out better, stopping with the ums and the ahs. And I can always improve and we will always be able to improve, but at least getting started with it has now gotten to the point where there's hundreds of thousands of views and over 10,000 hours, people have watched the content and it's helping people. So I think about the same thing for our children's book authors. You're so right. You know, I look at my grandchild who watches YouTube videos constantly and it's kids content. Yes, they love it. It's where she would much rather be. Even so, more often now it's turning from books to video. It seems like there's a real shift lately for the little ones as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this trend is going to continue and watch minutes are creeping up all the time. The last report I saw was that the average person watches a hundred minutes of video per day. So that's a lot of time watching video. And so if we Mm -hmm. can use that time, you know, for you, for the group, if you can use that time to remind people that there are great books, for them to consume, that can be a way to kind of to help them, you know, turn the videos off and go and read, which is really a a great
great thing. Can authors start small with baby steps if they're just getting ready and they're not ready to take the full plunge? Is there a way to dip the toe in and start small? Yeah. So one of the things to really think about with your video strategy is to not try to do too much in the beginning, but to be really intentional about the videos that you do create. So so often I, I meet with entrepreneurs who think, okay, right. Once I start doing video, I've got to do one live every week. I've got to do a produced video every week. I've got to do three stories a day. I've got to do reels. I got to do TikTok. And that's just not the case. Overdoing it can sometimes be overwhelming and result in complete inaction. So I always suggest that you pick the thing, the one type of video that you feel the most comfortable with and start there. And that might be creating a story that's going to disappear in 24 hours or doing a reel or doing TikToks. If you just want to be able to do really short bursts of information, then TikTok can be really great for you. But as you're getting more comfortable getting on camera, my suggestion to you is to not stay in that comfort zone for too long, right? Get comfortable, but don't stay there because the number one thing you need to do is not create video for the sake of creating video right? You want to be creating video intentionally and with a strategy. And that's, what's going to really make a difference for your business. So getting on camera, getting comfortable, trying live and seeing how you feel about it, trying TikToks or reels and seeing how you feel about it. Even doing more zoom calls where you're the person who's speaking can help you with this comfort around getting on camera. And I'm seeing more and more of that since the pandemic, people are just a little bit more comfortable facing a camera and talking because of zoom. So take advantage of that comfort level and then take it to the next level by being intentional and creating a strategy around the videos that you're creating. Is going live effective for authors? So this is not a question that can be answered with a yes or no because of what I said when it comes to being strategic. When you are an author, it depends who your audience is and who you're creating the videos for is going to determine what types of videos you should be creating. If your strategy is to create videos for the moms who are grandmothers who are buying the books, then yeah, you could be going live and you could be talking about that. But if you are creating the videos for the kids who are going to read the books, then going live on Facebook is not going to reach them, right? So it's not a one size fits all. You need to really think about what is my core message? What am I trying to accomplish with the books that I'm publishing? Who do I want to reach, right? Who is buying these books? Who do I want to reach? And then look at where should I be in order to encounter the people who I want to reach with my books, who I want to be buying my books. And that's really like a bigger picture. You kind of have to zoom out a little bit to really think about what you're trying to accomplish with your books. Is it sales? Is it building up a loyalty and connection to the characters that you're going to be using over and over and over again in your books? Or is it a loyalty to you as a writer? If you're going to be changing it up and doing different things, do you want to build a fan base that is predominantly going to be people who are buying your books and who want to follow whatever you do, even if the characters are changing all the time? So I wish I could say yes or no, but the reality is that it really does depend on what you're trying to accomplish with your videos and what success looks like for you. This subgroup is all around Kickstarter. And for many of the authors that joined us here today, they're going to trying to create a video, a short video, maybe no more than a couple of minutes long, but that first 20 seconds to a minute is critical because most of the people, when they look to fund a Kickstarter campaign, they're going to look at that video and decide right then and there, are they going to back this person, look further, or are they just exiting out? So do you have any tips or feedback for them, those that are planning this video on that short type of content? What kinds of things should they be thinking about? Background, colors, to wear, anything, you know, confidence level? Is there anything that you can kind of tips to share that will help them create these wonderful videos? Yeah. So the things that you just mentioned are probably the least important in terms of background color, how to do your hair, or what to wear, that kind of stuff is the least important. The most important thing is going to be the message. And you hit the nail on the head when you said you've got to grab them in that first 30 seconds. And I would say really in the first 10 seconds. So this is what's so critical. It's probably the most important piece of your video is going to be how do you grab their attention in that first 10 seconds? It's like a hook. How do you appeal to them? And so the thing that you want to be really, really sure about is that you are creating either 
some kind of curiosity or you are delivering some kind of promise of an outcome, which usually has to include some kind of gain for the viewer. Now, when it comes to getting a book Kickstarter going, it's probably going to be less about the gain to the viewer, and it's probably going to be more about the curiosity, right? You're probably going to be in a better position if you really drum up some interest, right? In that first 10 seconds. So play around with what makes your book different. Is there a message that you're really addressing in your books? Is there something that is unexpected in your book? Put that out front. Don't hold anything back. I think the average Kickstarter video, if you make it past the first 30 seconds, you're already in the top 50% of video views. So you want to get past that first 30 seconds. And then you actually want to make sure that they keep watching up to like two to three minutes. This is probably ideal, but only if you have the information to sustain that. Don't look at that number as like something that you have to hit. So you just keep adding to your script. Make sure that you have enough to sustain that and you keep them viewing because you want them to get to the end when you actually ask them to support you. Like that's the other piece that's so critical. You have to get to the point where they've watched all the way through and they're ready for you to ask for the support and they're ready to give it to you because they've watched all the way to the end. So I'll get to that in a second, but let's talk about what comes right after the hook. So right after you've appealed to their interest, right? You've created some curiosity. You've given them a reason to keep watching. Then you want to really connect with them. And this is so important. They need to feel a connection to you immediately. So what I would suggest is that the second part of your video, you know, after that first initial appeal is to give them a little bit of a reason to care about your book, either because of who you are, tell a personal story. You could share with them where the idea from your book came from. What's the origin story? Was there some kind of epiphany that made you realize you had to share this book? Give them a personal connection and that's going to keep them listening. Then you want to get into what it is that you have to offer. What is it that you're actually sharing? And this is the storyteller in you can come out now, right? This is where you want to engage them. You want to keep them interested. You don't want to oversell it. You don't want to tell them more than they need to know. You just need to give them enough for them to understand what they're investing in. And think of it that way, right? When they're agreeing to invest in your Kickstarter, they're investing their money. They're backing you. So give them a reason to do that. Now, part of that is going to be whatever perks you have available, but also what it means to you and what it is that they're going to ultimately get as a result. Once you get through that, don't waste any more time, right? That's the why of the call to action. And your call to action has why, what, and how. Why should they invest? What do they need to do? And even though it seems so obvious, you need to tell them, go ahead and pick your pledge level and click on it and back me right now. Don't be afraid or uncomfortable asking for this. If they've gotten to this point in the call to action, they want to see your vision to life. They want to see what you're offering and they want to see it come to fruition. So tell them how to do it. I'm working on a book that is very much nature-based. And it's about getting kids outside to explore and be interested in the world around them. So I'm curious if there's any statistics, like when I think of a video, my series is about the national parks. So I don't actually think of a person being on camera and this is not me being camera shy, right? But it's a, when I think of how to grab my audience, I would want to grab them with, you know, a beautiful picture of a national park that my character goes to visit and then show them maybe the illustration and kind of try to make the connection between a reality of a place you can visit and the book, right? Sure. So is there any stats in, you know, success of videos that have that person being the focus versus maybe nature or some other thing that doesn't necessarily put the author on camera? At some point, you need to be on camera. It's totally okay to do a mix. Get on camera in that first 30 seconds. And I want you to really play with this impetus that you have as the sort of piece that's going to grab them, that hook. Mm -hmm. And if you can find a statistic that is something like, if you had a picture of like a pine cone or something, I don't know, something that we take for granted as common knowledge. And you, you were like 98% of kids would rather view a video about trees than go outside, right? Something like that. That's really going to get to the crux of it. And then you can back off and say, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And this was the impetus for, for my books. And let me show you a little bit 
And that's the other thing that's really important for you guys is to show a little bit, even if you haven't completed the illustrations or whatever, but to show a little bit of what they're going to get. I have two questions for you. Should your video always include the author? And the reason I say that is I'm an older writer and I'm hesitant to show my face because of age discrimination. People do discriminate because of age. And that's my first question. I think you've somewhat answered it and said you should be on camera, but I really, because of age, don't want to be. And my second question is you talk of the video. Is the video like a trailer? Great questions. I'll answer the second one first. The video for your Kickstarter is different from your trailer because it's not just about the book, right? The video for your Kickstarter has to be about someone backing you and your vision. The trailer is about why they would buy the book, right? So there's a slight distinction there, which is why in the trailer, the author doesn't necessarily need to appear. In fact, I wouldn't put the author in the trailer unless they're a known author. But in the Kickstarter, the author does need to appear because you're the one they're backing. So let's talk a little bit about ageism and let's talk a little bit about limiting beliefs. I know that for A lot of women, it can be a real challenge in their later years to put themselves out there because they believe that the world sees them a certain way. And I understand why you would think that because the generation you came up through definitely had this idea around beauty, who belongs on TV and all that kind of stuff that has changed. And the generation that you're selling books to doesn't think that way. And in fact, that generation reveres the grandma figure. So what if you can show up in this Kickstarter and be that grandma figure that maybe they don't have? What if your presentation of your idea is going to help them feel like this is like a book that my grandmother would write? Can you feel how emotionally connected they might be to you as a result of your age? That maybe your age is actually a benefit? I guess the last part of the question then, Valerie, if I was to make a video or have a video made in which I would appear, what's the minimum amount of time that the author should show her face and how long should a video be? Thank you. Yeah, so the total video should be about two minutes. But again, it should be as long as it takes for you to share your message. Definitely over 60 seconds. You want to be over that one minute mark. How much you appear in the video is really up to you. There's no formula for this. If you find that you're extremely uncomfortable, then yeah, you maybe want to keep it to a minimum, right? Keep it to just a quick clip of who you are and why you were inspired to write this book series or this book, right? And then that last piece at the end, you need to be on camera to say, it would mean the world to me please support me by selecting your package or your perks and supporting this campaign. I know there's been a lot of question about like being on camera and what you should say, but more specifically, I would like to know what would be the percentage of your video, like a breakdown of the author versus a story. So not like, I don't care about being on camera, but how much of me should I reveal? Sorry. Versus like, Hey, the story is also about X, Y, and Z, or this is why I wrote it. So like, what's kind of the pie on what the video consists of? So you need to be injected into the why. You need to be injected into the impetus, the inspiration. And if part of your story is the inspiration, then tell that story. Always keep it connected to and relevant to why someone should back the project. So I co-wrote my book with my eight-year-old daughter. So I am like, should we both be on the video? Should she be on the video? Should I be on the video? What are your thoughts? So, you know, it could be really cute to include her if she's comfortable doing it. I think in the section when you're talking about the inspiration for the book, include her when you're asking for people to back you, maybe just you, even if, you know, it might be cute to have her just kind of like, pop her head in, depending on her personality to pop her head in and be like, yeah, back my book or something like that could be cute. But in terms of the actual ask, I would definitely do that yourself. So you're saying like not worrying about perfection really strikes a chord for me because I think I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to video creation. I'm a Kickstarter author. I did my first book late 2020 and right now I'm working on book two. And basically I just get so hung up on like the lighting being right, the sound being right. Like I've already filmed everything and I'm like, oh, but the lighting was prettier with my last one and blah, blah, blah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is you said, don't worry about perfection. How far do we take that? Like, you know, the balance between wanting to seem 
somewhat professional, not like totally an amateur, which I am, but I don't want people to know that. Like, how far do we take that? Don't worry about perfection thing. So here's my minimum bar, right? They can see you and they can hear you and there's nothing distracting them from the message. Now be careful with that last box of nothing distracting. You have to ask yourself, is this distracting to everyone or is this just distracting to me because I happen to know that the plant's supposed to be over here or that, you know, my hair doesn't always look like this or whatever. The other thing I would say is you've done this before. You had a video before you had backers before backers gave you comments about why they backed you. And I can almost, I'm going to put it on the line here and say, I'm almost hundred percent sure not a single one of those backers said I backed you because your video was perfectly shot and you look a professional focusing on that message and the purpose, like the reason that this is so important to you and to them for this book to get out in the world. It's super distracting to do like voiceover because sometimes the audio isn't quite the same. I have different like kind of b-roll footage of like zoo animals and all that kind of thing is there a graceful way to incorporate voiceover whenever the audio might not be exactly the same does anybody care are you going to record the voiceover using the same mic setup and just in a different environment more or less it will definitely be inside i would put money on with my capabilities you'll hear the difference and you're not using an editor right probably not there's two things that you can do that are fairly easy. So with iMovie, you can layer your audio. So one of the things you might try doing is if you don't want to record because it's cold outside and you can go to that environment and record just the silence or the sound of the space. Or if you go to your original video, if there's any spots where you're not talking and you have the sound of the space, you can layer that underneath. So that what you're recording in a more dead environment, which is inside your home, it's not going to have as much background noise. You can just layer that in underneath. That's going to help match it a little bit better. The other trick is to just have a nice little piece of music. Taryn asks in the chat, could you present the book by having the characters' voices do everything but the why? She's saying she feels like that would be a good hook. So actually having the characters talk about the book or somehow having them appear instead of or after the author has her say through it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, get creative with this for sure. You know, you want to be careful about having your characters take on a whole other life, which could be like an entire video strategy around your character showing up in your videos. But you can definitely have a little bit of the story being told in your Kickstarter video. You just don't want to tell the whole story, right? You just want to kind of give a sample, a little taste. Think about when you go to Costco, you know, they don't give you the whole cake. They just give you a forkful. That's all you want to do in your Kickstarter. You want to give people enough of a taste that they're like, yeah, I'm prepared to buy the rest. So yes, if that's going to be what engages them in your characters and brings the characters to, to life for them, absolutely. And if all you have is the illustration to keep the video interesting, if you've got like a voiceover character voice happening, then on your video, what you can do is just do a still image and put movement on it. So it might be a zoom or a pan or something like that, that just kind of keeps the person engaged if they're visually watching it. Keep in mind that, especially in the first 30 seconds, people may not have their sound up. So you want to make sure that you're putting some words on the page to help people understand what the video is about, whether you use actual captions or if you're just putting sort of highlight words up to grab their attention and get them to unmute, especially if you're going to be doing sort of character voices that people can't see, right? When someone sees a person on camera talking, they know there's something going on there, but otherwise it can be a little bit tricky. I had a question in regards to Facebook ads. Do you have any tips about like maybe what should be involved in a Facebook ad to market our book? Is the Facebook ad for selling the book or for funding the book? For selling the book. Right. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot changing right now with Facebook ads. So I'm a little bit hesitant to give any guidance on Facebook ads right now because there's a lot changing. It used to be that Facebook ads ran better when you had video. Lately, I'm seeing video plus stills as a combination is working a little bit better. But one of the things that you can do is to create videos that will 
actually gain some interest in what you're doing, capture the attention of the person who's going to be buying the book, because you're talking about the essence of the book, the moral of the story, introducing them to the characters, or generally speaking to the need for this book. And if you want to run some ads that are just video views, then you can use those video views, create an audience out of the viewers, and then run your ad to what's now more of a warm audience because they've already been exposed to you and the book that you have to offer. When you set up your ad, it's going to ask you what you want to optimize for. And most of the time people are optimizing for conversion, which is going to be a sale. But what I'm saying is optimize for video views. And that way, what you're doing is you're spending a little bit of money. And the only result you're getting is that people are watching your video. Facebook is going to be targeting people who will watch your video. Then once they've watched your video, you can target people who watched, you know, 25% of your video. You'll know that they're a little bit more interested, more engaged. They are already familiar with who you are. And then you can promote unless you already have a large audience on Facebook, in which case you can just go straight to marketing to them. Those are two separate campaigns you're going to set up. And the second campaign is you're going to create the audience out of people who watched your video, because now that you've got them interested in your message... Now you're going to say, hey, by the way, here's the book. I'm in the process of writing my first book. And the character of the book is my bird, Grumpy. So what I did was about a year ago, I went on Instagram and learned how to create reels. So I've I've been doing reels and posts on Facebook just so that people can get to know who he is. I've got a very low following. It's about a little bit over 300 followers, sometimes lots of views. And I've mentioned in some of my reels that I am working on a book. So I've mentioned it twice. So what would the next step be then? This is a very big question. But first of all, I want to say so far, what you're doing is great, right? Using the real life inspiration for your books and helping people get to know this character and get to know your bird is going to be really great way to use video ongoing. One thing I want to be clear about is mentioning your book twice is not enough, right? You want to mention your book every sort of fourth video you do. Save them as highlights so that you don't lose everything that you've been creating. The other thing is going to be to create some level of engagement so that your videos get shared more often. And you might want to repurpose your Reels videos if you can resize them and actually share them in your feed. I think you've started in the right way. I think what's happened is you're using such a small channel and it's hard to grow when your Reels are expiring. Repurpose them as actual videos and And start to focus on getting more engagement, asking questions, and then promoting your book and letting people know what they can do to support you with the book, right? Not just mention the book, but, you know, even asking questions. I've tried to get people to engage. And so in the video, I will ask them a question and the caption, it would have a question, but nobody responds. They just press like, or it just comes up as a view. So I'll be very forthright here. That means that your question is easy to ignore. You've given them no reason to answer the question. So ask questions that are a little bit more, a little easier to answer. That's going to help people showcase their knowledge or feel like they're contributing or that is going to be very sort of black and white, almost like a poll. Well, this has been amazing that so many engaging questions here. I would love to give you an opportunity, Valerie, to talk a little bit more about what you're doing for authors and for other female entrepreneurs that want to reach out to you. And I assume that authors here that would like to engage and learn more have other options in the programs that you offer. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I have a program for entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs called Video Marketing Mastery. And this program is a comprehensive way for women to create a custom video marketing strategy so that they're not just using one or two tactics or following one or two trends. They're actually creating a whole plan and a path. The first part of the program, we focus on the clarity So getting clear on what you need to be doing with your strategy. This is using everything that I used to do for other businesses. I used to charge a lot of money for a video marketing strategy. And so this is me helping female entrepreneurs see what they need to do to build their own strategy. The second part of the program is all about confidence. This is helping women see what they need to be saying, how their message can be most impactful, how to use the equipment that they need to use to share that message in a clean and concise way without feeling any sort of tech overwhelm. And then we actually spend a couple of weeks on mindset and dealing with the confidence piece, getting 
past this confidence gap that has existed for women for decades in terms of the double standards about putting themselves out there. So we get past that so that we can move into the final phase, which is consistency. And this is the number one thing that I hope you all take away from this. We've been talking a lot about specifics, but the most important piece of any video marketing strategy is going to be that you stay consistent, that you are doing things on a regular basis and Sometimes it feels like it's going nowhere. And this is what April and I talked about when she was on my show, Show Up and Be Seen, uh, that you don't know the traction you're getting until all of a sudden it flips over and suddenly you're going to see that that consistency pays off. So that's what we do in the last part of my program. We make sure that you are producing on a regular basis. You have a content calendar that works. You know how to promote your videos so that they get seen and that you're leveraging your videos and using what you learn from those videos to be able to actually reuse them, repurpose them and tweak your strategy to make it stronger. So that program is something that I'd be happy to talk to anyone about and you can book a free 30 minute video marketing mapping session with me. We can talk about your strategy for video marketing, what your next steps need to be. And if the program is right for you, then I would invite you to join it, but it's not right for everyone. So I give away these free 30 minute strategy sessions just so that I can connect with people and help them make that next step. It's kind of uh, maybe bad business, but I do it anyway because I love supporting female entrepreneurs. I do the same with my authors and it's <laughs> wonderful. It's my way of giving back. And I love that you do that for, for others as well. What's the website that they can go to to sign up and to learn more about your program? Yeah, so you can go to ValerieMcTavish.com. And there you'll see a pull down that says programs and you can pull that down. You'll see video marketing mastery. You'll learn all about the program and you can book a call through the link there. Also on that website, if the program doesn't sound like the right thing for you right now, if you're not a female entrepreneur, then on that website, you'll also find that I have a variety of different videos about how to optimize your efforts. And so you can go and just consume some of that content for free. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Valerie. And for those of you who are members of my Kickstarter group or of my Learn to Self Publish with April Cox group, my mastery, you have my permission to go and practice and go live in my group. It's a safe space. Go there and post your live sessions. Practice as you need to and let others show you some love and give you some tips or ideas on ways you can improve it because we all need to be there for each other to continue to improve and embrace this journey of growth. And I'm just so grateful that you guys took some time out of your day I think this was fantastic. Thank you again, everybody, for joining me. And thank you, Valerie, for all that you've done for us today and the great knowledge that you were able to share. Thank you so much, April. I hope I get a chance to work with some of you a little bit more. And like April was saying, you know, take advantage of the opportunity to go in the group and share your videos because we get in our own heads about this stuff. And when we can hear and listen to the other people who are saying it's great, it makes it a little bit easier to take that step forward and put ourselves out there. So thanks again, April. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care.